struggling power utility, Eskom, says you should brace yourself for more blackouts. The entity's chief operating officer, Jan Oberholtz, is saying this is because more units are breaking down. Oberholtz is saying Eskom needs between 4,000 and 6,000 megawatts of additional power to reduce strain on the grid. The utility holding a media briefing on the state of the system, focusing on its operational performance today. Where we stand at the moment, our EAF year-to-date is 64.4%. Uh, our performance in October was actually uh, unfortunately poor. Our UCLF uh, for the month of October, it was 26%. And in the corresponding period, we've also tried to up our planned maintenance. So as Jan indicated, year-to-date, we're sitting at about 9%. But for the month of uh, of October, we actually ramped it up to 12.6%. Now, the, the writing on the, on the right-hand side there, um, if you can see that, so it just indicates, again, the utilization of our OCGTs. Uh, we, we planned on, uh, or the provision was on around 1% load factor on the OCGTs. We're currently sitting at uh, more than 2%. We are projecting that that is going to increase to about 7.3% load factor. Now, th th this is coming at a time when uh, obviously ESCOM does not have enough uh, funds. However, in order to maintain the integrity of the system, in order to minimize load shedding, uh, that's what we will be spending, uh, that's what we project we will be spending. Uh, again, we need money for maintenance, so there is a competition between uh, uh, the money that we're spending on uh, OCGT and the money that uh, we'll then be spending on, uh, on, on maintenance. At that briefing for us, our reporter Kupano Gumbi. Kupano, good afternoon to you. I mean, so if I ask why is there load shedding, it's obviously because there isn't enough power generating capacity, there's short-term problems, what happened at Eskom, but it's about the longer-term problems that are t keeping us at this stage. Absolutely, Stephen, and I think the problems are varied and complicated and complex and expensive to resolve, which is the trifecta of problems that ESCOM finds itself at right now. Not only are they suffering from Kuburg, which is one of the biggest nuclear plants and provides the most amount of power, a unit went down uh, yesterday, in fact, and they spent a lot of time explaining to us how that happened, how that came to be, and what this will mean for us. I mean, there's Midupi, there's Kusile, there's older plants that we weren't even considering in the last 10 years that are now also uh, breaking and are at fault. And so we're losing a lot of power. And over the long term, fixing that is going to be extraordinarily expensive. And ESCOM does not have the balance sheet to support not just the maintenance required on these, any kind of new build, finishing Kusile and Midupi, which are not yet completed. That also needs capital, which they don't have. And now they want to introduce renewable energy sources to their mix, which, again, needs extensive amounts of capital, which they still do not have. Boils down to money in the end, doesn't it? Debt of 400 and something billion rand. So, I mean, a big issue is around that generating unit at Madupi. Fine, Madupi's working. Oh, wait, there's an explosion. No, it's not. It was 800 megawatts. I mean, to put that into context, the city of Joburg is going to buy 220 megawatts from, from the Kelvin power station. So, I mean, that's a huge amount of power lost at Madupi. When could it come back? It's absolutely. It's a huge amount of power. And, I mean, if you compare it, Jan told us earlier that 1,000 megawatts is around stage one of load shedding. So just one unit at Midupi being down is roughly equating to about us, whether it makes the difference between whether we get into stage one of load shedding or we don't have load shedding. And I asked him, in fact, about whether they thought there was any kind of sabotage related to the way that the plant fell apart or the explosion at the plant. I know that was the conversation that started when it first happened. And he said to me, no, 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 not at all. They think it's just an operational breakdown. Unfortunately, management failed them at that plant. And now it's going to take over two years to bring just that unit back online. And we don't know what the cost is. They were not willing to talk about how much that's going to cost. But what we know for now is that those 800 megawatts are now officially off the grid. So, amazing. And then, I mean, Eskom's expecting more load shedding during the summer maintenance, sorry, summer load shedding period, right? Yes, absolutely. They expect a lot more load shedding, and that's because so many of these units are down. And the problem is that when these units are down, they tend to revert to using the older units and using them at full capacity, which puts strain on those systems, which make them more likely to break on us and cause even more load shedding than what we have right now. 
In addition, they need to be looking to their other resources, which is diesel, which we know is extraordinarily expensive. And what, but unfortunately, they don't have that many more options. In fact, we spoke about the renewable, the emergency renewable power plan. And Jan Oberhoser was saying, this is a great idea. We love it. We can't wait. But it's taking so long to come onto the grid that even in the next three to five years, it's not really going to solve the problems we have right now with power.